welcome to the Engerati studio coming up to the close of day one at European Utility Week and I'm now joined by Surya Warrior who's the VP and Global Head from uh, TCS Utilities and uh, firstly welcome, uh, welcome Thank you. to the studio, thank you for making the time. It wasn't a long walk for you, this stands right there so, so that's good. Um, but one of the things that uh, we were exploring off air and uh, uh, you're talking about here as well is about the new digital technologies that are coming on board to disrupt the utility business model. Can, can we just spend a little bit of time on that and, and your view on that before we dive deeper into what that may look like? So, if, if you allow me, um, before I talk about the digital forces that come into play, I think uh, the need for uh, this whole reimagination for in the utilities, uh, there are three other drivers. So the digital forces that are in play today is one of them. Uh, the three others, uh, if you look at the whole consumerization of the technology and, and how, um, whether it is on the generation side or the ability for the consumer to control the, the, uh, the supply side. So that whole, whole thing about that, the way regulators are looking at um, how utilities should be, uh, if I can use the word measured, mm. uh, based on their performance and the innovation and so on, and, and uh, the whole returns and rates, rate cases are all based on that. The second. And the third is, uh, we see uh, a blurring of lines between industries. So what a manufacturing um, uh, company can do or what a retail company can do uh, is significant. So it is about not just about B2B or B2C, it is about B2B2C kind of a thing. So who owns the customer and where does the utility come into play, right? And I suppose there we have to also examine that word utility. Yeah. What do we mean by that? Because yeah. there's the retail of electricity to you and I, there's commercial retail of yeah. energy and electricity, there's distribution, there's transmission, yeah. and then there's generation. And yeah. at the generation end, there is disruption because of renewables and the cost of maturing technology and that side of things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the word utility mm -hmm. is is a little bit of a problem for me. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, uh, in my opening address today, I was saying that I heard in one of the conferences that um, there's a banking guy up there who said the banks better start innovating. And if you don't do innovation, we'll become a utility. So it was like, you know, I said, what? Yeah, so it has a connotation, <laughs> connotation which is negative. Yeah, right? which, is, yeah. Which, is, which is negative meaning which is commodity. Mm -hmm. So I think the word utility probably came because it was for two reasons. One, it was so, so core to living. So it's a utility. Without that, you cannot. So it's an essential. Mm -hmm. But it also has a connotation of commodity, mm -hmm. right? So you're right. I think the word utility is a little bit of a, a, a problem, and it, it probably doesn't represent the entire value chain that it covers, right? So from that sense, yes. Yeah. So so coming back to the question that you had, mm. the way I look at it is the digital forces is the fourth of the drivers which have impacted the, this industry and and has caused the need for the reimagination. Do you think it's the most significant, or or is there parity between four of them? Uh, I wouldn't, yeah, it is maybe in today's uh, world, given the proliferation of all these digital technologies across the industry, mm -hmm. probably it is, it, it, it is actually hastening the speed of reimagination, if I can say so. Mm -hmm. The other three were there and it has been, it has been there for the last few years and, and it's growing. And this is a bit like a catalyst. It's, catalyst. It's, it's kind of, yeah, it is, it is a bit of a catalyst, up, yeah. 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 And the, the whole digital thing, um, you know, we have uh, social. Um, we have big data, uh, we have mobility, we have, we have AI and robotics and we have the cloud. So all of these are helping this whole thing. And it is not just about one of them, it is a combination of them, mm. right? Mm. And uh, how do you uh, use data and how do you leverage cloud uh, and how, how does analytics work and how is it rendered? to people on social and how you can get feedback from the the end consumer and then use that back into your uh, analysis and so on so it's 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 a, a bit of a, 
a composition of all these uh, digital... It's a very complex forces. system that we're moving to, but we have the technology to glue it together. Glue it basically. together. So, so when, uh, if we then uh, try and drill down into it, and I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to focus it in because we've got 15 minutes here, we probably won't do it all justice, but so many commentators are saying we have to reimagine the, 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 the business model, we have to reimagine the business model. It's like... Uh, you know, everybody's saying, oh, I wouldn't want to be a utility right now because oh, there's all this reimagining. But if we could spend some time and try and reimagine it, could you paint a picture of what it should look like? Yeah. And maybe okay. we can take each of the stages or whatever, whatever simplifies it. Okay. So the way I would look at this is, um, you know, in TCS, as an organization, we have looked at this whole reimagination, and uh, we've come up with a framework which applies to every industry. So we have taken six aspects, and we have said a business model, business process, products and services, uh, customer segments, channels. So we've taken those different aspects, and we said if what you do affects one or more of this, then you're reimagining. Okay, right. So that's the framework. Right. So what I mean by that is for, for a utility industry, uh, take business models, right? So given the fact that every utility feels a need for finding new revenue streams, so you need to provide energy services. There are technologies and companies out there who produce those technologies. And as a utility, you need to work with them to provide these services. So if you want to provide, say, a connected smart home, right? So there are appliances which can be smart, which can give you data, which can be used as a feedback to do something about that, right? So that's a business model change, and that's reimagining things. You, you're not looking at them as competitors, but you're looking at them at as partners. You've got a new ecosystem, system, and, you, yeah. you, and you then go to market jointly, jointly. or however. So yeah. that, is, that is one thing. Yeah. And it also means you're introducing new products and services to the market. Yeah. I mean, you, you work with people uh, like us who are uh, solution providers and say, while I am the front end to the customer, mm. I work with the engine that you have and, and the technology and the people and the skills that you have to provide those services. So that is one thing. The second is, uh, as, a, as, a, as a possibility, we have looked at take uh, artificial intelligence on robotics. And somehow, in our mind, we feel that is restricted to certain industries, right? And we have, in our own company, we have looked at customers for whom we provide what is called a commodity business, which is business process right. services, right? And we have introduced a lot of automation and tools on it to improve the way that business process is managed. And we have helped customers move up customer satisfaction. What we have done recently is we have used robotics to work on this data. So it is like automating the whole exception processing using robotics, which is a new way of reimagining the so business. So when you say robotics, so this is intriguing to me, when you say robotics, it's, it's obviously not a robot that like we have, you know, the image immediately in my mind is something that's welding a car or whatever. This is a software robot, is it? Or yeah, 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 there yeah. are both types. So yeah. there are these drone type of things yeah. which can help you uh, maybe in a, in a plant, for example, in a generation plant or a manufacturing plant where that robot can help you take things around and people don't have to move kind of thing. But also there are the soft, um, you know, uh, the concept of robot robots. Mm is sort of software. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know? So uh, an, a, a semi-autonomous entity. That entity is, that which is can uh, think of its own right. or maybe program to think on its own right. kind of a thing. Right. Uh, and uh, just to give another example of this imagination is um, this whole uh, channels. Every industry talks about different channels of reaching out to customers. Right. So can you look at how do you reach the end customer? So can I look at simple things like web chat to reach out to your end customer, to make it easier for the consumer to interact with the... So these are some of the examples under that broader framework of uh, six things that I said. Maybe a good way for every utility to look at how do I reimagine my business? And that, that's the viewpoint that we have. And, uh, and when, you, when you look at that, uh, when you, 
so what is interesting when you say the reimagining is it, it, there's a mix between uh, the efficiency gains, the um, business process improvement, yeah, and then new capabilities, new capabilities new, that, yeah. that are exactly. driven out exactly. of that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and where is this uh, again? You know, you and I agreed off air that this word utilities is kind of defunct. Right, we need a new, some new expression. But in what part of the chain is this being felt the most? Is is this a, is this being felt the most at the consumer side? So, in, in the energy retail or distribution or, you know. Actually, it is a very interesting uh, question and a very interesting viewpoint that we have. Is we feel seeing this as different parts of the value chain is the beginning of the problem. Right. Because if you want to serve a customer, a consumer, it is not just about the end consumer and the end point of billing or whatever, right? The, the distribution uh, of, of electricity, the outage and the grid and how it is managed, the information from that is required to be used to interact with the customer. So how do you provide what's the, you know, the jargon? IT, OT integration. There are yeah. operational technologies, information technologies. How do you bring them together? So it's not about uh, uh, it's felt in generation or it's felt in, in the retail side. It is about end to end. So I, I need to do something in the generation side so that the end customer gets the benefit. So ultimately, it's a customer centric uh, world, right? So that makes sense and there's logic to it. So and I'm, I'm going to take a, this is a bit of a UK centric question. It applies to some other countries. So, so there is this notion uh, within the UK that actually you've got to unbundle everything. Every, everything's being unbundled. So you, the idea is you've got all these retailers, you've, you've, you've got different distribution services companies, you've got different transmission companies, you've got different generators, you've got the Thames Estuary and all this sort of stuff. This is fragmenting. What you've just articulated ought to be a very integrated system. Yeah. You know, are, are those two things at odds with each other? Are there, is, is there a conflict that's being created? I honestly don't think. The way I look at this is, if you are a distribution company okay, and you're doing certain things, you can do certain things which are intrinsically good for you and good for your performance. But you should also do things which will help you interface well with the other parts of the value chain. So a, a, a distributor will stand out in their evaluation if they do that. In the sense, you behave as if you're a vertically integrated uh, sort of entity, but you stand alone. So you have two responsibilities. It's One, to make yourself perform better. The other is to make others perform better in your ecosystem. Because you yourself being good doesn't help. Right? The cons consumer doesn't get anything. When you unbundle everything and there are four pieces and each perform in a, in a, in a good way, but the end consumer doesn't the get anything. Yeah. Does, yeah. 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 So, so my analogy is that it's like when cloud first started and there were all these different things and it was only when we got the APIs right and the language with the APIs and all of, we could join yeah. all yeah. of this up in a yeah. virtual stack. So to stretch that analogy maybe, so we need a reimagining of all the APIs between all these virtual parts of what yeah. used to be the utility. Yeah, but also it can also be looked at it another way. It is like you unbundle, you optimize each of those unbundled components, but at the next stage, you try to optimize the the overall thing. Gotcha. So, uh, I mean, you have to do it one way or the other. So it's, it's the whole thing of how do I simplify and improve, right? So when you simplify, I have to break it down and then I have to improve the broken down things, but then I have to look at it holistically. Because when it is comp when it's all together, it's very complex to think how to reimagine and how, what do I do uh, to bring in innovation. And what's the role? And we'll probably end on this. Uh, what's the role of regulation in making sure that that happens? Because you can have regulation that drives unbundling, yeah. but that can be sometimes at the to the detriment of this, you know, attention being paid to the cross point. You know when. The, the interface between distribution and retail, for example, or transmission and distribution or whatever. You, you know, what's the role of the regulator to make sure that those interfaces are optimal? Or is it the role of the regulator? Or do, does that need to yes. come out? I think there is. Yeah. So regulator, in my view, and, and in some parts of the globe, they're already doing that. As long as the regulator focuses on two things, one is a 
end con consumer, whether it is an industrial consumer or a domestic consumer, is one thing. The second is on outcomes. So if they say that you will be rewarded or your returns will depend on the outcome. Right. And and if that outcome is, is focused on the consumer, I think they would have done their job. And I think that, that would really, you know, channelize everything that we do finally to the customer, and which is what... And create the, the an whole, optimal framework. Yeah, I, okay. I think that's what well, Thank you very much. It's all we've got time for. Thank you. And uh, thank you as well for watching. And uh, again, nearing the end of European Utility Week, but still quite buzzy and busy. So I hope you enjoyed this.